Well, good morning, my DBS family. I hope you guys are awesome this morning and you're ready to hit off another amazing day. Well, guess what? We need to go over to Kendall in the news desk first. And when we come back, it's Wednesday. So we've got three features for you this morning. Stay with us. Good morning. A break-in at one of the recently opened Bido Park vending booths on Monday night has raised security concerns among other vendors who are concerned that they may be targeted next. They also have raised a number of other issues confronting tenants. This morning, everybody coming to work, one stall get booth. Then they take all the, um, the lights on the, off the building already. We need um, cameras inside of there. They have no washroom. We need bathroom inside of there. You have to close your shop to go and use the washroom. Then the water comes inside of the place when rain falling. When not, not falling the other side, they always have a, a flow of water. You have to be scrubbing it every morning. After two months, of being here, you know, everything, everybody is saying like, you know, it's a good, it's a good. But you know, we have to adapt to change. But when you have people quarreling and saying, what could make it better? And nobody, not taking nobody idea, that is the problem. Now, yeah, this morning we come here and we see, you know, one of the shops, you know, they break and enter the shops, but we don't even know if they're targeting the other two people, you know, all that we have to take in consideration. We're calling upon the government to come and have a look. Just pass and come and have a look. See what we are going through there. Because last week they break all the lights up there and now it is very dark. Hey. I just finished put these things there. I just ordered these things and put it there. And for me to see my neighbor there, they break the, her house last night. It's the same thing I'm thinking for me now. There's no um, security, there's no police around to see what's going on because if they had police, they wouldn't do it. But what I'm asking, I'm asking the people in, for it, in authority, high authority, high in position, to see, work in our interests, to see what they can do for us. If it's a camera they can put on the two house, two buildings that they're the big building, that is the pantry and the government building. I'm asking them to do that, please. We never said we didn't appreciate the shops. We never said that, or we didn't want it, okay? We never said that, but we want it under better conditions because you cannot invest your money, pay so much money for a shop, spend money to organize your shop, put your um, counter. It's not everybody that can afford. Things are hard everywhere. And the sale, is not, the sale is not what it was. The break-in at the vending booth came hours after city police emphasized the importance of city patrols to curb theft and other crimes in the city. The break-in occurred mere meters away from the city constabulary. In other news, the Ministry of Health has launched a Vector Awareness Week as one way of emphasizing the ongoing battle against mosquito-borne diseases. The need for heightened awareness and concerted action has never been more urgent. Vector Awareness Week is not just a campaign. It is a call to action. It is a reminder of our collective responsibility to protect ourselves, our families, and our communities from vector-borne diseases. This campaign, we will focus on educating and empowering every individual with the knowledge and tools to combat these threats effectively. Throughout this campaign, we have planned a series of activities, including environment educational sessions, working with school, householders, corporate St. Lucia, and the community to roll out vector control prevention activities. These initiatives aim to raise awareness about the importance of preventing vector breeding sites, promoting the use of protective measures, and encouraging early detection and treatment of vector-borne diseases. The week aims to spotlight both the challenges and solutions in controlling mosquito populations and preventing diseases such as dengue, Zika, chikungunya, and malaria. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority has set its sights on the Latin American tourism market. Tourism Minister Dr. Ernest Tiller says discussions are ongoing with several countries in Latin America to facilitate the movement of persons from Latin America to St. Lucia. 
our carnival is unique, it's different. Um, our cultural expressions are unique, different. Our music, our food, and more and more we've seen the demand from Latin America for, you know, to come to the Caribbean. The Caribbean also is near. Um, for persons who want to, to, to visit. We have always had logistical challenges um, because until you have the critical mass, uh, critical numbers, it will always be a challenge in terms of direct flights and whatnot. But we are working on the, the flight from Caracas to St. Lucia. Dr. Hilaire says that the island's attraction as a honeymoon destination is resonating in Latin America. Therefore, he says that the flights from Caracas, Venezuela to St. Lucia opens the entire South and Central America to St. Lucia with Caracas being the gateway. The St. Lucia Teachers Cooperative Credit Union is celebrating 40 years of helping people and changing lives. The milestone was celebrated with a cocktail party at the Sandals Grand Resort on Sunday under the theme, Celebrating 40 Years of Growth and Resilience. The journey continues. We are in the business of serving our members and we'll continue to put our members first. And as the credit union motto says, people helping people. We are in the business of helping people, changing lives and making things better for our members. Our members are very important to us and we want to make it better for our members as the year goes by. At the event held to celebrate the 40-year milestone, several of the members, officers, staff as well as founding members of the cooperative were honored for their contribution to the organization's development. These are your top stories. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Kendall. We take a break and come right back. Anna Kay is the name, and she's a young lady, and they've put on, the Optronics folks have put on a, a workshop for young people to be able to learn the dynamics in, 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 in terms of, you know, understanding this whole AI and building platforms that could accommodate where we're heading technologically as, as, as a people. So here is um, Anna Kay to tell us all about it. You're looking at this little person here and you're probably saying to yourself, e -e -e. you know, a little doll, maybe a little modeling thing, you know, that's what, it, it, that's what comes to mind. Well, well, let me bust your bubble a little bit. A, li a little psyche that there, you know what I'm saying? One of the little techie people that's there. Anna K. Budu is the name and um, she's the facilitator of uh, a camp. A coordinator of a camp that is running right now at the Cambridge School, um, dealing with coding. And, and, and you're going to have to tell me the language because... I so lost here this morning, but I'm glad you're here and you're going to break it all down for us. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Okay. Tell me what's happening. Tell me about this camp. All right. So we are in our third to final week of the camp. Mm -hmm. um, it is a Python programming and generative AI camp. And the children will be learning how to use Python and AI models to build a chatbot. Wow. Yes. What do you mean? What Build a who? A chatbot. A chatbot? Chatbot. A chatbot. Listen, all yes. you're working with each other here. What <laughs> that mean? What's a chatbot? So they'll be using AI. You know, some businesses, they have chatbots. So instead mm -hmm. of speaking to a customer service oh, chat rep. Chatbot. Chat, chatbot. Okay, we go come back to <laughs> go, go carry on with the conversation. Yes. Yeah. So they'll be building a chatbot, which is basically... They'll be using AI to answer questions that you pose to the chatbot. So almost like chat GPT, oh. but for specific purposes. So we'll have some groups doing um, one based on medical information and health. And then we'll have another group doing one based on disaster awareness. Wow. Yes. But no, 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 no. Break it down for me now, Anne. How vital is things like that going forward? This is where we're heading, right? Yeah. Persons with skills like that will be very, 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 very efficient very. going forward, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. Oh, my God. All right. So the I, I think we could focus on the disaster awareness yes. one, considering Hurricane Beryl has just passed. Mm -hmm. um, but a chatbot like that would allow us um, to ask it questions about the mm -hmm. impending system, about hurricane preparedness, about maybe the opening hours of businesses, stuff like that. Um, so we wouldn't have to call, we wouldn't have to go and search online. It could just be a very quick and efficient way to get information. Yeah. Yes. And the students would use information that 
already exist. So data sets that already exist, as well as um, learning language models, which is an artificial intelligence tool um, to create the chatbots. Wow. Yeah. So who? Oh. Okay, so when we, when we, okay, I'm trying to understand. When we, no, no, when we send, okay, so the, the thing is created and right. I type a question and I send it and I ask right. that, right? So mm -hmm. based on what, what, wherever I send it to the platform is going to pull the information that I will normally have to go on search and right. Google and bring it and say, hey, this is what you're working with. Yes. <laughs> Do you know if it's been used already? Like most of the I people? know that they started this, like all of them started on Friday. Right. So they still have to do the graphical user interface, which would be the part that you and I would interact with. Uh -huh. Um, instead of seeing, you know, everything in the back end. But I should have taken that class. You should have had a class for people maybe, like me too. Maybe we should. Well, in the future, you have to do that because I mm. need to understand this thing. Do you think that we, we where we are right now, like you said, this is a beautiful, these are two different um, topics, very diverse topics mm. that you've, you've decided um, to undertake. But they're v so very relevant. Do you think that our persons within that field, that sphere, is already using this? Like, like the med services and these people on this island here use these things already? You do know? I don't know, but I would hope so. I would think so. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> so yeah. in other words, you're just preparing these young minds that, you know, even if it's not being used or if it, it, it is right. being used, when they come to the market, mm -hmm. they are prepared. Right. So this camp would have been sponsored by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank mm -hmm. as part mm -hmm. of <laughs> as part of a push to um, use education to bridge the gap between the skills that students leave school with and the skills that employers are requesting. Yeah. So the the, uh, the end goal or the underlying goal through all of this is to encourage them to not just be users of technology, but also look to see how we can use technology to innovate in the yeah. fields that already exist. So that's where we're going with that. Listen, man. And this is the first time you've had it? No. So <laughs> last year we would have had another camp with ECCB. That one would have been robotics and Python. So we Aye. split them into groups. Okay. <laughs> Yes, but this year everybody's doing the AI. same thing. Yes, AI is where we're heading, and we need to jump on board because if yes. not, we go get left behind, right? Mm -hmm. Um, moving forward, though, um, you were the one initiating the that, that the program. Okay, so our our company is made up of quite a few people, um, and all of us would have worked together to get this off the ground in right. collaboration with the CCB okay. and also the Ministry of Education and the. Republic of China, Taiwan. Those who did it, it was a four body okay. collaboration for St. Lucia, but this camp is also running in other ECCU islands. And on uh, August 29th, they're going to have a chatbot competition where they will get to present their, yes, <laughs> they'll get to present their chatbots and compete um, and win prizes for best chatbot as well as other prizes for soft skills that they exhibited during the camp. Yeah. This is lovely. And it was free. Yes, it was free. It was free. <laughs> yeah. it was, listen, it was absolutely free. Would it be back on next year? Do you know? Or am I, am I ahead of myself? Mm, I, I know that we're looking into it, but nothing has been concrete okay. yeah, right. as yet. Okay, well, that's all right. We're, go, we're going to put it out in the universe. <laughs> next year, they had, had a camp and they had to open it up for big people like me. <laughs> right? We're putting that out in the universe. Um, well, thank you. How can we connect with your company because maybe you do right. things um, apart from that that we okay. can so from. optronics you can reach out to us through our website which is optronics.co mm -hmm. um, on social media we're optronics ltd so that's right. o-r-b-t-r-o-n-i-c-s ltd mm -hmm. on facebook instagram and youtube and if there is something that you know you want to email or whatever you can info at optronicslimited.com but all of our contact information is on our website and our social media pages right. oh, so once well. you search up optronics st lucia or optronics limited you should get it you should get that yeah all right no girl i come in soon <laughs> no, no, all you have some teachings to, to, to lay upon me there but we definitely um we appreciate that we appreciate okay. you know what you're mm. adding to the fabric and especially extending it to the young ones. This is, right. this is vital. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a good day. You as well. <laughs>
um, you know, one of those programs for big grown people like me because we have been left behind. Well, guess what? Somebody actually thought of us and they have invited, there's a, a media colleague, well, it's a long time media colleague here on the island. Um, she's now traveled, living abroad, but she's come back home and is offering a platform where media personnel can come and have conversation and learn a little bit more about AI and journalism and how it is that we can enhance or marry the both and enhance our lives. This young lady right here is no stranger to the media fraternity on the island of St. Lucia. Tammy is the name. Some of you yes. might know it, Winnet, but we, no. we're sticking with Tammy for we're today. Tammy. Tammy, how are you? Welcome back home. Yes, it's really good to be home and it's really hot. I know. It's I'm really hot, it. I can really say hot. that. Certainly. But I'm here on a Wonderful. mission. So. Yes, that is why yeah. we're here, because we need to find out what that mission is all about. Um, of course, moving with the times, moving with technology, you understand and have a command of the industry and knowing, boy, if we don't do something or if we don't get on board, we'll, we'll get left behind. For sure. All right. You know, it's, um, it's one of those things that when you, when you dabble in a lot of different different fields you're able to to look at it from different perspectives so right now well most people know me as an educator mm -hmm. and then there's another group of people who know me as a media worker yes. so now i'm creating that balance and trying to educate or enhance the knowledge of my media friends and so i'm here to do uh just to run a little workshop slash seminar with uh, with my friends, I'll still call everybody my friends. <laughs> you know, trying to to make it as laid back as possible, but also something that's inspirational that they can take into their work with them. So we're focusing on AI mm. for sure, and you know, like this is a big thing right now. Yes. AI has always been there, mm -hmm. but right now, really? yes, it's always okay. been there. <laughs> Everything you do, you know, you. When you go online and you an buy HD? something, yeah, it's, not, it's, not an, it's HD. an HD. Yeah. It's an HD right now. So, like, when you use your credit card online and they ask you all these questions, it's it's some form of AI, AI that's trying to be like, okay, is that really Maureen or is that Jordan trying to, you know, yeah. get oh, into her stuff, okay. right? So we we've, we've been there, but then now it's at our fingertips, pretty much. Everybody has access. Oh. Your ten year old, yes. Can, your 12 year old, your 16 year old, everybody has access to it now. Everybody has a computer, everybody has a phone. Yeah. So my, my goal is to help people be responsible. Right. I think it's being responsible, teaching people how to use it and to be efficient and to be effective yeah. and to use it in your work to enhance your work. I don't think it's going to replace anybody. Wow, you, you, somehow, you somehow a little update. Yeah. I, I got scared, you know, for a no, moment. No, no, no. We're not, we are not, we are not replacing people. Mm -hmm. We're using it to do the things, you know, the little things that take up time and to allow media workers, allow our friends to be humans, to, to, to use their skills and to, to talk because you can't take away the personal touch, especially yeah. not in the media. No. You, you can't send a, send a robot to interview yeah. me right now. No. Nah. Yes, you can, but, but we won't yeah. laugh. <laughs> you know, there won't <laughs> you, be you any You might fun. laugh, but you would know yeah. it's a robot. <laughs> yeah, you know. So at the end of the day, um, it's just about teaching the media workers, teaching people, teaching my friends how to use all the different resources. I know everybody's using ChatGPT. All the different resources to make their work better. Right. To be more efficient, you know, to show them how to write proper prompts when you're using ChatGPT. Everybody can use ChatGPT, but are you using it the right way? Oh. You understand? Are you just taking things wholesale and just plopping it in there oh. and expecting a response? Oh, you this, might get that from me. Yeah. That's, and that's it. <laughs> you know. And then on the flip side, you also have people who are afraid of it. So we have, we have two extremes. Yeah. We have people who are excited about using technology. And you have those people who are afraid of it. I'm a, I'm a little skeptic yes. from time to time. Yes. So but, I, um, let me mm -hmm. ask you, um, um, Tammy, let me ask you. There is also a myth. Is it a myth? You will let me know, you know, out. There is also that thing that, you know, the whole insurgence of AI makes you no longer utilize and exercise the brain capacity. Um, so they are saying we are creating a, a space with a lot more lazy and... Uh, and P person is 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 that well, is that a thing? It can be a thing. Okay. It can be a thing because the goal of the goal of AI really is to help you 
again, be efficient. So if you used to take time trying to put all your photos together, you, you went out there to do a new story and you have all the data and you're trying to put it together, you know how much this takes a lot of time. Right. If you can use a tool that can, you can just put that in there and it will create a table for you, a graph or whatever, then you can leave that and go and do something else. Do something else. Okay. So that's what it's supposed to be. But when you start just taking things and you know you're not doing anything, that's that's a you problem. Right. Okay, that right. Really so it's come back down now to personal yeah. responsibility. Yeah, it's personal responsibility, mm -hmm. and you have to in every in everything you do, you have to be accountable. You have to. It's it's about streamlining your work, leveraging the tools that you have to be better. Right. Not to become lazy, but right. to become better. Because when you start getting lazy, guess what's going to happen? If AI doing everything for you, yeah. you know what's going to happen? You replace. You replace. <laughs> One time, same you time. Replace, Here comes right? the fearful part so. for me. Um, Tammy, when when is this? What what is this? What form is this going to take, and where is okay. going to be? Okay, so we're having the workshop. So I'm working with. Um, so Arthur is actually allowing me to host this activity, and it's happening on Wednesday evening. Um, I think Wednesday is the 31st of July at 5 p.m. So it's from 5 to 7 and it's open to media workers. And I think it's uh, also communication uh, personnel within the various ministries. Mm -hmm. I know the invitation was sent out. And um, yeah, so far I heard that quite a bit of people are interested. My colleagues are taking the mantle and riding on. So I'm very happy about that. And it's going to be very exciting. Um, I plan not to do a lot of talking at that act, during that activity. I really want to show people how to use, how to play with the tools. You know, those people who are afraid of it, you know how to how to play with it. It doesn't bite. You know, me. I'll be there. <laughs> Tell me, I will be there Wednesday, be there the thirty first. But the time again, five p.m. to seven p.m. Okay, two hours. Definitely, I'm going to be there, Tammy. I, I I'm interested now. Now, Tammy bricked it down in such a format that you I'm now have a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you I, have fun. I got that yes. sense. So I'll be there. Certainly, we're going to be there. And media partners, this is an opportunity. It's free. We had a pay. Uh, <laughs> well, because so I'm here yeah. giving my service. The whole idea is I there's a registration fee. That's fine. The registration fee, however, it, it everything goes through Sir Arthur when it comes to the payment. The the hope is that some of that money will go towards the students in the media club oh, at the school. That's good. So it can, you know, they can get some tools, they can get some and That's enhance right. their skills. Okay. So, so that so is my contribution. Register? Where do we register? Uh, you register through Sir Arthur Lewis. Okay, so or through Glenn platform? Simon. Okay. Or through Glenn Simon, and we'll, he will we'll have, pay, yes. Sign up, we'll pay, yes, and, and we'll yes, be yes, for Certainly. sure. All right, guys, if you're interested, choose Sir Arthur Lewis. If you know Glenn, Glenn, what go on? Glenn Simon. Yeah, Glenn hey. Simon, big up you. <laughs> we could we could register through there, and, and hopefully I see you guys there as well. And Natalie Fannis as well. Oh, that's, well, there you that's go. Julie, yes. yeah, that's yeah. our girl. Yes, so. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you there. Hope we'll see so you hard. there. Jade, do we go in, right? I'm sorry, Jade. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's my Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. Do you know what tomorrow is? It's Emancipation Day. That's right. And we're in for something exciting. Do you know the link between the, the breadfruit and slavery and our ancestors? We have a breadfruit and bread nut festival tomorrow. Chalo spoke to us about it. Emancipation is what's on our mind and a lot of conversation has been had. Um, I'm here with Chalo. You're probably wondering why I'm here with Chalo, but here's what. I don't know if you are aware. I mean, last year I was invited and I couldn't make it and I felt really bad afterwards. Um, but I had another engagement on that day as well. We had the breadfruit and the bread nut festival and my good 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 friend marjorie my charger you know she was part of it and she said you need to come and I, I i didn't i didn't make it in time and i felt very bad so it is my hope that i don't miss it this year that is personal chalo you're the man behind this <laughs> and very good actually you have the opportunity where it's actually for three days this year so if you miss the first day which is august the first then you have the, the friday the second and of course the, the saturday the third so yes, it is indeed um, the third year that the Anglican Church is hosting the Breadfruit and Bread Nut Festival. As, <laughs> I'm um, to say the Wape Ipi Shate, um, yes. Festival. So it is part of the National Emancipation Program. It started off three years ago, 
And it was a way of us looking at our marks of mission. The Anglican Church of its world is called a mark of mission. And it also looks at the whole question of, of community, looking at the re reduction in the import bill and so on. So it was a way of, of showcasing the various ways that the bread firm could actually be be used. You know, people usually tend to think of it as only eating, but there are many byproducts that could be made from the breadfruit itself. You have the 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 the, the, the jams. You have, of course, the yeah, the jams. Yeah, yeah. the jams. You oh. you have the whole question of the vodka, the wines. Yes, a lot of things. The punches. You have the, the oils that could be made out of it. The soaps. Yeah, the scrubs. So there are many ways of. And what it is actually showcasing is that, look, the breadfruit and all different parts of it could actually be used. So even the lumber, what we usually throw the stumps and so on, that could actually be used to produce furniture. Yes, so... No, Chalo, come on. Let's wire back down. Let me come a little closer to you because I'm excited. I'm, I'm thinking, um, why breadfruit? Why bread nut? Is, is it something about these plants that um, is religiously linked? Or is it that... You chose this plan because it is part of our fabric, and you could have chose anything else. So you you just decided this this is the two this is the one we that you choose to do for emancipation. Okay, we have done the the banana festival. We did it for independence. Okay. Yeah, but for the breadfruit festival, we focus in on emancipation because, as you do know, um, the slaves. Okay, that was introduced and it was used as, as their food. The, the food. Um, for the supply and so on. That's the link I'm looking so for. That, so that's basically the link, yeah? yeah? Um, yes, for example, we know, and you notice that it is the church that is actually doing it. The church was, yes, part of, part of, of the whole question of slavery. But when we're looking at the rep repression right now and so on, we are also taking that into focus. And as, um, our leader would say, our Ashdeacon would say, when we look at the marks of mission and the, the focus now for the church, when we talk about liberation theology and so on, is actually to, to take care of mankind because what is happening within the community it will also affect the church. So we are very cognizant of, of that. And of course, we have to take care of the environment itself. So all of that is placed into what we are doing in terms of the focus. And there again, what we are also showing is that there are many things that could be done with the breadfruit. And it also has health benefits to it. The health benefits is very, very, very important because you could actually take the breadfruit and make flour out of it. Yeah. And that is much better than the white flour. Mm -hmm. And usually we bring that kind of component. We have one of our partners who is the tea lady. She actually makes teas out of those things. Yeah. So where well, we have breadfruit tea. Oh, wow. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot. And that is what the, the focus of the exhibition is to do, to show us that it is not only to cook the breadfruit, eat it with the green, sorry, the green fig or the chicken back or whatever it is. But there are other things that could be done with it. And a lot of the times we throw a lot of the stuff. Eh? So for example, what we call the breadfruit pot, which is a flower, right. right? That could actually be used, you know, and you have places like in the Philippines and so on where they actually use it. So it might not be part of our culture right now, but what we are realizing is that we throw a lot of it, even the breadfruit skin could be used as chips you know yes. so all of that and then you know the skin has much of the, the nutrients and so on and also we are working along with the uwi in in st augustine they actually have a a a a, 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 a department dealing with breadfruit um dr dv yeah and so on and we have developed that link we're working with, with them on that we are also working with the ministry of forestry agriculture mm -hmm. so they too have been part of our breadfruit festival and what they do is that they bring it, they give us the plants. So the, the bread food, the shatter and so on. And it is really to encourage persons to take it, go to your, the, because we know a lot of people just have the land. Yes. Okay. And if they actually plant a tree, that is food that they are producing for themselves. Yes. And of course, for their neighbors and so on, as it was done before. Right. So the, 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 the bread food festival is educational. Yes, it's culinary. But at the same time, it is showing us that we could help reduce on our food import bill. And it's also cultural and historical. Now, let's break down the three days briefly. Um, you say it starts on Thursday, which is Emancipation Day the first. What time can we come out? Um, what do we expect? I mean, just run us through the three days. Okay, that's so the three days essentially, all of them start at 10, 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. 10 a.m. And we move up to 6 o'clock. Sometimes we say 6 o'clock, but people are so excited. People remain till 7 and so on. And there would be various persons displaying the different aspects of it. So you have the, the rural um, enterprise women of Babuno, who of course always come with the, the, the roti shells, okay, that is made out of breadfruit. And I can tell you people like Father Anthony, 
he would buy dozens and dozens of that yeah and one of the beautiful thing about it is the fact that a lot of them they get the after sales so even after the exhibition as in there they get the information and so on and a lot of people you know have become their their clients we have the the ice cream yeah the breadfruit ice cream we have this young person from Mikud who does the ice cream from various 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 fruits and of course because it's a breadfruit festival she would be focusing on the breadfruit and the shatai we have the punches okay the punches we have the juices just name it so apart from the eating and the food and so on you have other products that is being provided and it shows us what we could do and the information is there so it is not for those who are only exhibiting but i could tell you they give a detailed account of how the things could be done so when you go home you could get your breadfruit and then try it out and so on yes all right well we're looking forward to that um chalo oh, yes, uh yes. three days so i can't yes, miss it yes, i can't yes, afford yes, to miss it see yes, mr my yes, screen make sure you're oh, there yes. to guide me as to where we go in oh, because yes, you know yes. you know the things i like right don't i ain't ready to build the house yet so in the meantime i'll stay by the food and that's <laughs> i gotta stay by the food but that is awesome so yeah. this thursday into right. Saturday. And we, we are very thankful to the government of St. Lucia, of course, for having it on the National Program for Emancipation, right. as they have done for the last three years. And we continue to look for the support of St. Lucia to come and see what they could be utilizing in terms of the breadfruit, so we do not throw away a lot of the stuff. Absolutely. We have a lot of medicine out of it, too. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. all in all, you know, yeah. it so is really a showcase experience. for education and so all on. Right. Chalo, right. thank you very, thank you very much. much. We look forward to this. Say it again in Creole for me. Bwape Epishate Festival, um, Luka Kumasi, um, premier jour à août, pour troisième jour à août, nous ka fait bon, um, l'église anglicane là, Holy Trinity Church, moun sa, sa, just bon, d'église, so c'est là nous ka li, from dix, dix heures, um, bon matin, pour six heures, le osoué. Well, that's our program for today. It was exciting, I hope. And um, tomorrow is going to be a holiday. So we're not going to be seeing each other tomorrow. But on Friday, we'll be back here again in each other's company. Um, I want to remind you, the small ones, the young ones, to remember to look at your cartons and look for those questions again so you can be part in the, um, the watch and win. But whatever it is you're going to be doing tomorrow, there's a number of things on the island that you can engage in, um, including the Breadfruit Festival and the Breadnut Festival. But there's a lot of other things that is happening to mark emancipation celebration. I think there's an activity down in um, Sufre as well you know so there's a number of things on the island so whatever it is you choose to do tomorrow you know let it be a time of reflection let it be a time of you know deep thought you know as to what does emancipation really means to us as a people go on out and have an awesome rest of the day and enjoy your holiday tomorrow and let's do this again on Friday for another DBS this morning bye now <laughs>